Hello everyone, in this video we'll talk about leukotrienes. This small concept of biochemistry is kind of confusing to many of you, but after this video I promise that this concept would be super duper clear to you. Let's analyze the name to understand the concept. Leuco is kind of similar to leukocytes. It's kind of associated with leukocytes. So by looking at the name we understand there is something to do with leukocytes. Then trienes kind of tell us about some chemical features that there are three consecutive double bonds. So now we understand leukotrienes are kind of some chemical molecules which might have a chemical feature of three consecutive double bonds and they are found in leukocytes. So these leukocytes, these leukotrienes are actually a family of eicosanoid and they are arachidonic acid derivative. Leukotrienes are inflammatory mediators just like other arachidonic acid derivative such as prostaglandins. So let's talk about how leukotrienes are synthesized in our body. So everything starts with the arachidonic acid and I am damn sure that you know how arachidonic acid is synthesized. It's from the plasma membrane phospholipids by the action of uh, specific phospholipase enzymes. Now, arachidonic acid gets converted to leukotrienes and the key enzyme in this process is arachidonate 5-lipoxygenase and 5-lipoxygenase enzyme is the rate limiting enzyme here. So, this could be used as a target for several diseases. Now, leukotrienes are generated by oxidation of arachidonic acid. So, if you look at the pathway, here we can see arachidonic acid is oxidized into a intermediate which is known as 5-HPETE and then ultimately it gets converted to leukotriene A4. From leukotriene A4, they are further converted to leukotriene B4 and C4. And the key enzyme that we have to understand in this pathway is arachid arachidonate 5-lipoxygenase. And here we can see, if we look at this position, we can see there are oxygen association with the ring. That means oxidation had happened. Now let me tell you that leukotrienes are lipid-based lipid signaling molecules which can convey paracrine and autocrine mode of signaling and they are generally pretty much common in case of immune systems. So they could either give rise to autocrine signaling or they can give rise to paracrine signaling in between leukocytes. Now, the production of leukotriene is usually accompanied with the production of prostaglandins and histamines, which are other inflammatory mediators. So, from arachidonic acid, one hand side, there could be production of leukotriene, and other hand side, there could be also production of prostaglandin, de prostaglandin derivatives, which are also uh, take part in inflammatory responses. Okay, since we have learned the structure of the leukotrienes. Now let's understand how leukotriene signaling works and how it can work like a signaling molecule. So leukotriene receptors are class of G protein couple receptor. So generally they work by elevation of the cyclic AMP in the cell and lead to several pro-inflammatory cytokine genes etc. But few leukotriene receptors are also nuclear receptor type or PPAR receptor type. And these receptors are generally found in eosinophils, endothelial cells, mast cells, etc. Now, since these are found in endothelial cells and also smooth muscle cells, they are having important role in terms of smooth muscle contraction. And that connects their physiological role with disease. So, let's try to understand how leukotriene is associated with disease. So, major role of leukotriene, especially leukotriene D4, is to trigger contraction of bronchioles. So, contraction of the bronchioles is triggered by leukotriene and this is the key underlying feature of rhinitis or asthma-like diseases. Now, leukotrienes contribute to pathophysiology of asthma as well as, uh, especially in the case of aspirin exacerbated respiratory diseases whose symptoms are airflow obstruction, increased secretion of mucus, bronchoconstriction, infiltration of the inflammatory cells, etc. Now, excess of leukotrienes can lead to anaphylactic shock, which is pretty dangerous, right? Lastly, I will tell you that recent research has shown that leukotriene inhibitors could be very useful for patients who are suffering from late stage of Alzheimer's disease and dementia. 
Clinical trials has shown that uh, administrating these kind of inhibitors might improve the memory loss. So in this video, in short, we have learned many things. We learned the leukotriene biosynthesis pathway. We looked at the involvement of leukotriene in disease. We also looked at how leukotriene signaling works at cellular and molecular level. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you find this video useful, please don't forget to like, share and subscribe. You can also support me in Patreon. And if you want to take my course in Unacademy, which is India's biggest learning platform, you can use my code AP10 to get a 10% discount. And do let me know in the comment how you like my videos. Your comment is my motivation. So see you next time in the next video. Thank you.